welcome at this table leaders of 24 countries which together span the world. Some are rich, some are poor, some are large, some small. Yet your presence on this occasion would indicate that different as the countries are, your governments are alike in attributing to the United Nations high importance for the lives of their peoples and for their national interests. In this respect, today's luncheon constitutes a microcosm of the broad commemoration of the 40th anniversary of the United Nations. Heads of states and government and senior ministers from practically every country in the world have confirmed the support for the objectives defined in the Charter and articulated a broad concern that the United Nations function will fully effect on their achievement. I find in this cause for optimism concerning the future of this organization and of the world itself. The United Nations was created to serve all nations to the extent that economic problems are solved, that human rights are protected, that suffering and want are reduced, that conflicts are peacefully resolved, all governments and peoples will ultimately benefit. With the commitment and the sustained support of all countries, the United Nations can make its full and necessary contribution to these objectives. Weaknesses in the performance of the United Nations can be overcome. And I assure you, I will continue my own personal efforts in this regard. To the remarkable achievements of multilateral endeavors during these 40 years can be added the attainment of a peaceful world. This, I am convinced, convinced is within our potential. I would now propose a toast to the health of the presence, the vice presidents, the prime ministers, and the special envoys who are our honored guests today and to the peace and prosperity of all their peoples. We are deeply grateful for your presence, which in itself enhances the prospect that the hope and faith so widely placed in these organizations will be fulfilled. Thank you. Mr. Secretary General and distinguished guests, on behalf of the people of the United States, I'm honored to be with you today to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the United Nations. The world is a busy place. It's full of movement and action, and it's good for us to get away from things for an hour or two and meet in the quiet of this great room, consider the meaning of the United Nations, its past and its future. There are a great number of distinguished world leaders here today. I believe, Mr. Secretary General, that their presence bears witness to the enduring vitality of the idea of the United Nations. I believe it also bears witness to the success of your leadership during a challenging time for both the UN and the world. This anniversary for all of us, a time for reflection as well as celebration. The nations and the peoples of the world value the United Nations for many things, but most perhaps for what it symbolizes. The UN began as a symbol of hope and reconciliation 40 years ago after the worst war in history. It's no less a symbol today. The United Nations is still a symbol of man's great hope that someday he'll be able to resolve all disputes through peaceful discussion and never again through the force of arms. The United Nations is a symbol of man's long struggle to, struggle to rise beyond his own flawed nature and live by the high ideals, 
that the best of mankind have defined and declared down through the ages. As the host country, the United States believes in the United Nations and in what it symbolizes. We have criticized it sometimes in the past when we felt that it was not all it could be and should be, and we have on occasion been frustrated. But we have never stopped believing in its possibilities, and we've never stopped taking the United Nations seriously. That is why we are determined to see to it that the United Nations lives up to its noble potential to further the cause of freedom, defend individual rights, increase economic growth and well-being, and strengthen the rule of law. And so today, 40 years after the birth of the United Nations, and 15 years before the end of the century whose tribulations inspired it, let us together seize the moment. Let us recapture the vision of the Charter and recall the principles upon which the UN was founded. Let us resolve to make this organization and the world it represents a better, safer place. And let us renew our commitment, individually and together, to peace and justice and the rights of man. And may I presume to suggest a toast to the Secretary General and what he has accomplished and what he is doing for all of us. Surplus, we must have a surplus if we want to... Uh, 
last year. So each of the last three years, we had a five hundred million dollar surplus each year for the last three years. It's used in next question. Best illustration. Gentlemen, it's o it's over. Gentlemen, it's over.